Okay guys, today I'm going through the AQA Accounting 1 June 2012 paper. Today I'm going through question 4 which is a suspense account. Uh, you know, edit some profits and then talk about errors in the trial balance. So part A, it's about suspense account. You're given 7 adjustments to make and you have to put them in the suspense account if they require a suspense account. So part 1. General expenses of 1340 were correct, entered correctly in the cash book. But have been entered to the general ledger as 14.30. So there are your two figures, they're the most important thing. And the important thing with suspense accounts is to know how to do your T accounts. So our general expenses account, so I'll just draw our T account, so general expenses. So what we've done is we've posted 14.30 to the general ledger however this should be and expenses go up on the debit to go up they increase on the debit and go down on the credit so they were meant to be 1340 but we've put them in as 1430 so we've overcast our expenses so if expenses go up on the debit debit they must go down on the credit so we need to credit 90 We've credited 90 and there's no opposite uh, transaction to this 90, so we're going to have to debit our suspense. 90. So we go to our suspense account. I'm just going to put in general expenses. 90 pounds. Easy enough. Okay. So, second point. The purchase returns, so that's returns inwards. Uh, it's purchased outwards, sorry, returns outwards, sorry. The purchase returns day book has been undercast by 200. So, yet again, let's just, so that's point one. So, point two, let's just make our T account again. So, it's returns out. Also, this question was requested on my email. So, if you want to email me, request a question or a certain topic, and I'll find a question related to that topic, I can do that. Just makes it easy for you guys. Okay, so returns out, they go up on the credit. Now, why did they go up on the credit? Well, purchases, which is the opposite to returns out, because if you make a purchase and you return it, that's a return out. So, purchases go up on the debit, so that's bringing stock in, but returning returns out is taking stock away, so it must be the opposite. Purchases go up on the debit, returns out go up on the credit. So. What have we done? We've undercast by 200. So if undercast, that means that side's too big. Debit, the purchase side's just too big. And if it turns out, go up on the credit, we're just going to have to credit 200. And once again, there's no reverse transaction for this, so we're just going to debit our suspense 200. So once again, we go back to our suspense account. We go on purchase returns or returns out, however you want to say it, and just put 200. Easy. Okay. Point three. A check for 162 paid to A Smith has been entered in the account of J Smith. Okay then. Right. Well, we have two. We have two accounts. We have to adjust there. We've got A Smith. And we've got J Smith. Okay, so it's a check paid to them. So these are liabilities to us. So originally we owed 162 to A Smith. No. So what we've done is, these, these are liabilities, these two. And as we know, liabilities go up on the credit that way. So what we've done is we've reduced our liabilities because we've accidentally said we've paid a check to J Smith. But that 162 should have actually been paid to A Smith. So we haven't really paid J Smith. So we need to cancel that out, 162. However, just because just we've cancelled that out does not mean we've done the full correction. We also need to make sure we've made we've put into account the fact that we've actually paid A Smith 162. 
so we need to debit 162 just like we did with the accident there so we've got two corrections a debit and a credit so we don't need to use a suspense account because they cancel each other out okay part four discount allowed of 425 has been entered into the credit of discount received okay then so we've got two T accounts again if you can do T accounts you can do almost any question when it comes to second year accounting at college it's so vital you know how to do T accounts so well how did discount receive and discount allowed increase and decrease well discount received is an income so it goes up on the credit discount allowed is an expense so just like general expenses at the top it's going to go up on the debit okay so what have we done discount allowed of 425 has been entered to the credit of discount received well it's given us that so 425 so that's the error it shouldn't be there it should actually be there we've allowed 425 so we need to cancel that out first of all by debiting 425 so now what we need to do is because discount allowed is an expense and we've allowed 425 as it says in part 4 we need to debit 425 so what are our two corrections the 425 there and a 425 there however these are it's not like part 3 because both of these are on the debit with debited discount allowed and debited discount received so our suspense is going to be credit the suspense of the two debits so 425 plus 425 is just 850 so now we need to update our suspense so this is just going to be discount discount allowed and receive 850 okay the debit balance of 1110 on the carriage inwards account has been brought down as 1101 okay how have we made a mistake there then once again T account carriage in okay well carriage in goes up on the debit as well because it's an expense to us in the income statement it comes after gross profit and decreases that to give, you our, give us our net profit so a debit balance of 1110 well if we had a debit balance the carry down will be on this side 1110 and then we've brought it down incorrectly we've brought it down is 1101 it's been carried down as 1110 because the expenses go on the debit side so because this side's bigger than this side we're going to have to have a carried down on this side so we can balance it just imagine there's a total gap between a carry down and brought down so we've had that and we've brought it down as that so how are we going to increase that to get that which we previously should have what we're going to do, we're just going to debit 9. So we've got 1101 plus 9 gives us our original carry down. Right, is there an opposite transaction to this? Well, there isn't. So we're just going to have to credit our suspense. And it's just simply £9. So carriage in £9. Okay, questions. Part 6, this is quite the easiest one. So sales right, well sales go up on the credit they're an income <coughs> so if sales go up on the credit we've overcast them by one thousand pound well if they've overcast them that means this side must be too big the credit side so we need to bring that down by a thousand so we're just going to debit a thousand Therefore, and there's also there's no opposite transaction to this, so we're just going to credit our suspense a thousand. So in our suspense account, let's go back sales one thousand pound. Easy. Okay, and the final additional information: 
Rent received the 450 has been entered correctly into cash but have not yet been posted to the rent receive account. Okay, this is only going to have an issue with one T account. Rent receive. Well, rent receive, once again, just like sales, it's an income, so it's going to go up on the credit. <coughs> and what do we need to do? Well, we've just we've not put it in. We've just forgot we've completely forgot to put in the 450. So what we're going to do is we're just going to credit 450. Real easy. And then we can just debit our suspense. Or 50. So this is going to go into our suspense account, rent receive, 450. So now we need these two sides to balance each other. And this side is much bigger than this side, so we're going to need to carry it down. <coughs> and the carry down is 1119. So they both now equal 1859. And that is our suspense account balanced off. So that's part A. So if you can do your T accounts, you can basically do it as long as, as long as you know how the um, the T accounts go up and down depending on what the title is, whether it's expenses, liabilities, incomes, assets, etc. So on to part B, which is a question I quite like. So, actually, we're going to need the other sheet as well, aren't we? So, what we're being asked here is, how do these adjustments affect our profit figure? Well, part one, general expenses. Right, so we're going to have to do more working out again. So, part one. General expenses of 1340 were correctly entered into the cash book but have not been posted to the general ledger. Sorry, have been posted to general ledger, but at 14.30. So, okay, so originally we overcast our general expenses. They were, they actually are 13.40, but we, we said they were 14.30. So we've actually, we've said our expenses are more than they actually are. So what we're going, we've had to decrease our general expenses. Where are we? We've had to bring our general expenses down. So, if our, if our general expenses are going down, then our expenses in total must be going down, therefore our profit must go up, because we're decreasing our expenses. So we're just going to have an increase in profit of 90. Okay, purchase returns. Okay, well, we've increased our returns out. We undercast it previously. Part two, the purchase returns day book has been undercast by 200. So we just have to increase our returns out by 200. <coughs> so if we increase our returns out, where do returns out go in the income statement? They go in the cost of sales. And they're taken away from the cost of sales is the important thing about that. So if we're increasing our returns out, we're going to decrease our cost of sales because we're taking more away from our cost of sales. So our cost of sales will decrease, therefore our gross profit will increase. Therefore our profit will increase, therefore our profit will increase by the, the amount of the adjustment which is £200. So increase in profit by £200. Okay, a check. The check paid to A. Smith, but it was paid to A. Smith. It should have been paid to A. Smith, but it's been entered in the account of J. Smith. That is going to have no effect. Now, this is so, sort of to do with the accruals concept, where the transactions already happen. We've already we've already wrote it in our account. They're just a trade creditor to us. Also, it makes no difference to the trial balance because our trade creditors are going to be the same amount, whoever we pay them to, really. So that's going to have absolutely no effect on our net profit. Okay, discount allowed, part four. Okay, discount allowed, 425 has entered to the credit of discount received. Well, we thought we received 425 in our mistake. The original is there. 
So we thought we'd received 425, which is an income. However, what we actually did, we allowed 425. So what we're going to have to actually do is, we've gone from, winning, from gaining 425 to losing 425. So the difference is 850. So we're going to decrease our profit by 850. Because we've gone from a l we've gone from gaining to losing. So we've basically that's it. We've lost all our discount received, and then we've gone into discount allowed. So we've got to add the two figures, which were 425 plus 425, which was just 850. Okay, carriage inwards, point part five. The debit balance of 1110 on the carriage inwards account has been brought down as 1101. Well, we increased our carriage in in the debit bit. We increased our carriage in. So therefore, what's that going to do to our um, profit? Well, it's going to increase our cost of sales, because where does car carriage in goes in our cost of sales? And we add it to our cost of sales. So if we've increased our carriage in, we're going to increase our cost of sales and therefore decrease the, decrease the gross profit and decrease the net profit. So what it's actually going to do is decrease our profit by 9. Sales, this is really easy, just a thousand decreased. Because we say, for example, say we thought we made we sold £10,000 worth of goods, but we actually sold 9000 Well, straight away your profit's going to decrease because you've not sold as much as you thought you did. Simple. Okay, rent received. Well, we completely omitted it from our accounts, 450. And what do we do with other incomes? We add them to our gross profit. So we didn't even take into account previously, but now we should do. So 450, increase our profit. Now, part C. State and explain two types of areas which will not affect the balancing of the trial balance. Okay, well, error one, I'm going to go for compensating. I'm not going to write my explanation, I'm just going to say it. So, it's where two errors cancel each other out. So, imagine if your trial balance balanced at, say, 10,700. Then you put two errors in, and they both bring it up to 11,000. You're not going to notice the error, because the trial balance is still balanced. You only, know, you only notice an error if the two trial balances don't balance, say it's 11,000 and 10,900, then there's an error. Because all the debits and credits should cancel each other out, or be equal to each other, like in the T accounts we've seen. So you won't be able to notice that, and will not affect the balancing of the trial balance. Okay, the next one I'm going to go for is a really easy one, omission. Let's say we... It's just when you, it's when you completely forget to do a trans uh, to write in a transaction. Let's say we purchase some goods from a trade creditor. So we w say we completely forgot to increase our purchases, and we completely forgot to increase our trade creditors. We completely forgot that we got the stock in and bought it, but we also completely forgot that we owe money to people. So that's not going to affect it in any way because our purchases go up on the debit, whereas our trade creditors go up on our cr our credit. Sorry, purchase on debit, trade credits on the credit. So but say if we bought some goods for 500, purchase is going to go up 500, trade credit is going to go up by 500 because we bought goods and we owed them the money for them goods. However, we've completely forgot about that. So it's still going to balance either way. And the final one I'm going to go for is reversal. So basically, this is where we debit something that should have been a credit and we credited something that should have been a debit. So basically we've just got the transaction the wrong way around. And that's all really. So that's question four. It was 21 marks, so it should take around about 20 minutes. And uh, that's about it. If you've got any questions, please email me or put it in the comments. Also, I know you've got exams coming up. I know it's uh, May time, I think, for accounting exams at A-level. So I'm going to start doing like uh, revision notes, just general notes, like how to... Um, answer an income statement, a balance sheet, a bank reconciliation in general, not doing a particular paper. And I think that's it, so uh, I'll see you guys later.